The war is being waged everywhere, every day. A Christian business owner declines to participate in a same-sex wedding, and a judge meets out a punishment that could bring financial ruin. A Christian parent objects to an immoral book her child has been assigned to read, and the child's teacher refuses to budge. A pro-life pregnancy center provides tender care for expectant mothers, but a state law forces the center to display a sign promoting abortion. A biological male demands to be treated as female, even in private spaces, as the existence of truth is denied and meaning is eviscerated. A historic memorial to war veterans stands as a reminder of the price paid to protect freedom, but an appeals court rules that the memorial must be dismantled because it is in the shape of a cross. Are you kidding me? This is real life. This is revelation in action. This is biblical prophecy happening. This is not good. On and on it goes, and at the heart of every situation, writes Bob Paulson, it is a conflict between two or more worldviews. A worldview often described as the lens through which we view the world affects all we think, do, and say, whether we are conscious of it or not. And today in the West, the Christian worldview seems to be losing influence almost, de- almost daily. Little by little, a rebellious world has chipped in, chopped away at the once prominent Christian view. The Judeo-Christian worldview has become the pariah stepchild of worldviews and is being attacked, while other worldviews are respected, reverenced, and recognized as part of history and the culture of other nations, notes apologist Rabbi Zacharias. One tragic consequence, teens and college students abandon the Christian faith at an alarming rate. People born between 1999 and 2015 are twice as likely as the general population to identify as atheists, according to a new Barna study. Atheists denying the very God who created them and loves them and died and rose again in their place so that they could be saved. They just believe. And a recent article by John Stone Street, president of the Colson Center for Christian Worldview, noted that one-third to one-half of students who said they were Christians when they entered college no longer made that claim at graduation. Do not go to public college. If you are a Christian, go to a good Bible college. Or else you will face the worst storms of your life. And unsaved people, non-Christians, don't go to college. Do you really want them to brainwash you? Be free. Go to a good college. Consider the Christian colleges out there, or at least what, see, is now Christian and used to be called regular, normal, good, decent. Those who remain faithful share three common characteristics, according to Stephen Garber, professor of marketplace theology and leadership at Regent College. First, they have a solid Christian worldview, knowing what they believe and why. Second, they have community with others who share that worldview. Third, they have parents or other mentors who exemplify Christian character. With such high stakes, we must understand exactly what we mean by the Christian worldview. Put simply, it sees and interprets the world through the lens of Scripture, which is God's revelation to us. It affirms that God created the universe, that humans sinned against God, breaking their relationship with Him, that God made a way for people to have their guilt forgiven and to be reconciled to Him and one another through faith in Jesus' atoning death and resurrection that as new creations in Christ, we are to live as salt and light in the world, proclaiming the good news of salvation to all, and that one day Jesus will return to judge all of humanity. Those found righteous in Christ by faith will worship and serve the Lord forever, while those who refused God's offer of salvation, free offer of salvation, may I add, will suffer eternal punishment in hell, where the devil belongs. When one truly believes this, it changes everything. And it's not just a matter of changing an intellectual position. When we put our trust in Jesus to save us, God gives us his Holy Spirit who changes our thoughts, our desires, and our outlook. We are set free to serve the Lord with gladness. We are no longer slaves to sin. We have a right standing with God and know that we can trust him in all circumstances. We understand the desperate need to share the good news so that others can find new life in Christ. But other prominent worldviews stand opposed to Christ and the biblical understanding of the world. Today, perhaps the most prominent in Western nations is the secular humanist worldview, a most dangerous one. Open Doors, which maintains the world watch list of the 50 nations where it is hardest for Christians to live, recently cited secular humanism as one of the four major trends influencing global persecution of Christians. The secularist revolution is now expanding to historically conservative nations, particularly in the form of a new sexual agenda, that's at odds with the traditional Christian worldview and also the normal scientific biological worldview. 
In many countries, Christians, uh, Christian belief is portrayed as archaic, backward, and detrimental to the health of the individual and society as a whole, when in reality, it's the only cure. Christians are also sometimes deemed unfit for service in public service or public office, corporate leadership, or community affairs. While a Christian lives under the authority of God's word, the only cure for the human soul, and believes what God says about marriage, the secular humanist view says that people should be able to marry anyone. One day they'll probably say it's even normal to marry your own bed if you want to, because their thinking is you can do anything you want. And by the way, that's a main tenet of witchcraft. They'll even push that a Christian business owner must be willing to participate and celebrate a same-sex wedding ceremony or be punished. But the same-sex couple is not told that they must go to a Christian baker or be punished. Hmm. While the biblical worldview holds that life begins at conception, secular humanism sees the unborn child as having no human rights, no worth, and as being an in inconvenience and too burdensome on society. While the biblical worldview affirms that God's design for sexuality allows us to flourish, secular humanism demands that we all support unbridled sexual license and autonomy, while ignoring the damage and pain of promoting a sexually charged culture. No one's happy in a sexually charged culture. Abdu Murray, North American director with the Rabbi Zacharias International Ministries, explains that Christian worldview training ultimately helps believers to share the gospel and reach others for Christ. Christianity evidenced the greatest ethic of love when Christ entered him in history to sacrificially die on our behalf. The fact that he died on the cross does not show weakness. It showed the ultimate act of love because love is self-sacrifice. The articles that follow on pages 12 to 17 will help you to understand more about the Christian worldview. And those basic pages are basically based on the entire Bible. So just open up your Bible, begin in Genesis, skip over to Matthew. You're already on your way to knowing simple things and everything that the Bible wants you to know. Because that's all you need to know. Because that's all there is to know as a human being. Christian worldviews often conflict with various fake worldviews prevalent today. And why the Christian worldview alone best expresses or best explains reality, mercifully providing us a roadmap to flourish both now and for eternity, is because it is the Word of God, the creator of mankind, the creator of the universe. He knows how things work, how things should go, what's best. And everything he says to do or or implies it's good or says it's good in the Bible, is good. People enjoy it. It's true. And everything he says isn't, isn't. It's uncanny. Because he knows. If you bought a vacuum or a crib or something and you needed to put it together, would you not check with the instructions at least a little bit? They knew what they were doing when they put it together and they told you how you can quickly assemble it. Why would you ignore that even a little bit, even if it's just reading one part of it, when you will end up spending hours fixing what you broke while trying to put it together yourself. It just doesn't make sense. The Bible is the only thing that cleanses society and makes it good. And anyone who's told you otherwise is lying to you. It's completely unhistorical. It's not true at all. Every time the Bible has invaded, there's been a revival of joy. Marriages have been restored. Families been united. The society been made happier, purpose regiven, countries blessed. It's amazing. And with the Bible and the gospel comes salvation and peace and joy that nothing else can replace because we all have a God-shaped part in us that needs him. And nothing's going to fill that part. Nothing. Maybe for a while sin does. But never really truly and quickly goes away. John 3.16 says, for, all has, uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And if you do confess you are a sinner and believe he, Jesus is the Son of God who died on the cross and rose again in your place, in prayer to him, ask him to save you, he says he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Hebrews 13.5 Thanks for watching. And I do hope that this video has blessed you in some way by God's power alone.